<laughs> now, this is one I'm going to ask you about. Mick Foley, around this time, has revived his dude love character. Uh, but yeah, yeah. this time as a heel with the dental flippers in and the hair tied back and all that kind of thing. And he would go on to wrestle, uh, wrestle the second of two consecutive pay-per-view main events for the WWF title against Steve Austin. What did you think of the dude love? Because there's sort of two versions of dude love, the, the bad guy version, the good guy version. But did he ever talk about dude love to you while you were training with, with Dominic? No, no, no. That was, uh, he came up with the... Uh... <clears throat> Where the, the name Cactus Jack came from was in Clarksburg, West Virginia, where we uh, wrestled many of our earlier shows. Uh, that was also the first night when the UWF crew came up and we'd spoken about before, mm -hmm. uh, where I would meet Eddie Gilbert. And, uh, and they sell 2,000, 2,500 tickets. It's called the Nathan Goth Arena, you know, packing out. And right down the road, there was a bar slash bowling alley called bar restaurant slash bowling alley that was called Cactus Jacks. And we would drive by that every time going into and out of the, uh, the town. So that's where that came from. And truth or consequences, New Mexico, there's a story to that. And we forget what, what it is, why he chose that. But no, the, the other incarnations, those were, as far as I know, later, later developments for him. But I, in that, I think it shows you like mixed whole approach to the business. You know, where mine was more focused on the, the holds and counters and the, and the believability of you know, Mick saw wrestling going in a way that, you know, quite frankly, I think at the time was not not necessarily ahead of the class, but he took it to a different level because you know we had you know these characters before and stuff. You know, suddenly everybody was you know Randy Savage you know, for wrestling when he was doing that when he first originated that that was a really over the top character. You know, the whole get up and everything, but because Randy could go in the ring. People just sort of, oh, okay, and, and accepted it. And that sort of started becoming the norm moving forward, where it was, used to be black boots and black tights. And then suddenly you have this little bit of a change. And, you, you know, you really, it shows, you know, Mick's intelligence is that, you know, he could get into it. Mick hated the gym. You know, Mick's not the most physical guy. A little shh, secret, won't tell anybody. He's not the most physical guy in the world, right? Uh, but boy, he was able to figure out a way and coalesce these ideas into something that fit his personality perfectly. Uh, and was seamless for him and worked, you know, and, and captured the, the imagination. And so you got one guy playing three distinctly different characters and could seamlessly move between those characters. That, that's going to be hard, you know, because you, like it's, when you're playing one character, the franchise, you know, you're focused in on, on just that character and the things, what would this guy do or not? Do? And, uh, you know, now suddenly you go, well, this guy might do it. This guy would do it. And this guy well, could, could do it on certain days. You know, I think it would make it really difficult. But again, it shows you mix intelligence that he was able to come up with these characters, and then get them all over. Because uh, I would seem to think, like, imagine Randy Savage suddenly doing like 180 different characters on certain shows. You'd be going, what's Savage doing? Why is he, you know, it would just throw a loop to you. Really is a testament to Mick. And, you know, the thing about Mick is he so loves professional wrestling that when he came in, again, he wasn't going to be the guy with that Paul Orndorff body. Uh, Mick was, quite frankly, allergic to the gym. Uh, and, you know, this kid with this hair-shaped body, uh, good athlete, but, you know, again, you don't, you don't strike him, you go, oh, I hope he looks like that someday. Uh, but, boy, he really took what he had and made a lot more with it than most people do with a lot more. Uh, as far as on, on the basic building blocks. And when I, you know, you watch that, like Mick, when we would be driving down the road, a lot of the discussions that we would have would be like aspirations to the business. Like, boy, boy wouldn't it be nice if someday you could wrestle in WWF? Or, oh boy, little will I know, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, those kind of conversations. And then Mick would, like, in the, if you weren't paying attention, like, you, he would just throw a comment in. And you'd be like, what? So, so why, what are you talking about? And, like, and then he would go into this, like, five minute, Segway, like it was just sort of like off, off the right side of the road here, and uh, and so you could even see then because I looked and, and those characters that he would later develop, you know, that time Cactus Jack, but where how his thinking process and stuff was, uh, you know, I'd say like, with, the, with the comedy tour, I would say, if, you know, if, in another lifetime, it might it could have been stand comedian, 
You know, they, 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 the way his brain thinks and, you know, takes something in the news and can twist around and make it funny. And, uh, that That's very much, much in, in Mick's uh, thought process, how he thinks through things. And uh, I, I always, and, you know, first of all, I have an affinity for Mick, right? We're brothers. I mean, we will always share the connection when we came into the business and we trained the same way. Um, and for a large portion, really part of our career, we would call each other and say, hey, you know, Bill Watts is offering this, and you know, what, what do you think? We we really did kick a lot around the business side of that for, I'd say, first four, five, six, seven years of the business. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Mix because he, again, you know, starting out together, obviously, with him, but, you know, just watching him and seeing that, you know, guys with a whole lot more as far as athleticism and, and look and all of that, you know, come in and somehow – you know, can't find their way to the top of that heap. And Mick did it three times, right? And got all three of those characters over, or actually four, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. When you throw in the, the evil uh, dude love, mm-hmm. you, you know, it's it's something else to watch somebody um, that you knew was that kid to come out and create that character. And, and, and here's the thing that I think permeates all of this, and it puts a stamp on all of this. Ask any wrestling fan from that late 90s, early 2000s, hey, what about dude love? They don't go, hmm, do love, uh, refresh my memory, right? It's, oh, yeah, you know, instantly what, what it is. And then, and that the same guy played all three of those characters, and they will give all three of those characters distinct different personalities. Well, this guy's, you know, cool, and this guy's this, and this guy's that. Uh, that's, that's a testament to not do it once, but to do it three or four times.